Today's episode is sponsored to you by A&H Provisions. Meat and hot dogs that are so good, even Goyim understand how amazing they are. It's the next level of kosher food, and the website is kosherdogs.net. Get yours, enjoy them, a and Provisions. Here we are back at, and here's Modi. Hi, everyone. We have in the studio today, Jake Cohen. Hi, Hi Jake. Welcome back. I'm so excited to be back. It's been such a journey since the last time I, yes. was, I was here. You last- were here episode 56, which was back in December, and this will be episode 80-something. 80, wow. 80, so, 80, deep 80, deep 88, 80, 89. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, one of those. Love. Yeah. Welcome back. I yes. think we've gotten a little bit better since you've been here. So I mean, we'll- also, it's just like, our relationship has changed. Like yeah. we, oh, completely. We, we are a family. We yes. are really, we are a family. Truly. Emmys, we Bread are family. has been broken. Bread has been broken. Drinks have been had. There is no connection like moving into a house with someone. I always say it's like the only way to get close with someone is to like replicate real world. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yes. Like, yes. yes. Uh, that's, that's exactly what that was. So f- to fill you guys in, if in case you haven't been following. Well, hold on one second. Speaking <laughs> of family, speaking of family, the podcast has a family besides you, Jake. We have our sponsors, our collaborators, our friends, A and H Provisions, the best which we brought You're to the good, house. Yes, you have to bring for Labor Day. Yes. You bring them for Labor yeah, Day. Yeah, and it was uh, amazing. And A&H Provisions, the uh, best kosher meats. Glock uh, kosher. Glock kosher meats. Best hot dogs in the world. Even Goyim know how good they are. They know that <laughs> they know that there's a difference. Um, and their website is? Uh, kosherdogs.net. Use the uh, code Modi for 30% off your first order. Modi for your co- code to get your 30% off. And our friends at... Uh, Whites in Luxembourg, the law firm Whites in Luxembourg, the the law firm you want on your side. If ever chas v'sholem, you need a law firm. <laughs> That's who you need. Wow, we have kosher meat and law firms. In That's it. This podcast. is a Jewish podcast. I love it. Wait, it's really the world. Two and their need. website is whiteslux.com. And, if, and Seth is from A and H is our friend, and Arthur Luxembourg, a close friend of uh, of the podcast. And now they're family. They're they're podcast family and again living with you in the house was an uh, experience what Nobody house c- what house okay so we can set it up yeah we were in fire island together we we last time you we were here we spoke about it kim kushner made the shidduch when we ate at her house yes that you and i and us were gonna all be uh would would be great for a shabbat dinner together and you said to us we found a fire island house that has an extra room and those of you who don't know what Fire Island House is, let's describe this. So we have a quarter share, which means we get five weeks spread throughout the summer. So you get like a week in May, a week in June. A week a month. A, a week a month, basically. And so we're coming up on our final week for Labor Day. Yeah. So it'll be our fifth week hanging out together in yes. the house in Fire Island. Yeah. And so it's everybody gets a room. It's a house. It's on the bay. There's a deck. It's stunning. The house is massive. Everybody has their own little vinkle, their own little corner <laughs> in the house. And there's a kitchen that's gorgeous, and you can entertain. And Jake is entertaining. That's and the goal. I cannot explain it to you. So when you have this, they take turns cooking and all that. We didn't have to. Jake, the the food you made was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. And then we have another person that's in the house, Michael Kleiman, who tried to always tries to impress you by his cooking, yeah. which is good. He's, he's a great grill. He's a great he's a cook. cook. A great grill, which is great because I love a night off. Right. <laughs> that's it. Right. And he he killed it with a few dishes he made and barbecued and he was ordering things from the, the mainland. It was crazy. And um, we ate a lot of the recipes from your... Uh, from your book. Yes. From that's... your second cookbook, I Could Nosh, which comes out September 12th. Yes. Yes. It's uh, it's fine because I've talked about this a lot. I was just with with Isaac Mizrahi, who yes. we're making that shidduch with too because he's obsessed with you too. <laughs> and 
it was about the the Tupperware of cake that I would bring every time. This legendary the, Tupperware. The legendary. Like well, just, tell the tell them how this tell this Tupperware so thing it happened. So it was it was it was Katie Kirk's Tupperware that she gave me because we we hang out, we cook, and she's like, oh, take this Tupperware. Um, it was there was this like crazy backstory to it, so it was meaningful to her, and it became our tradition because I was baking something. It was right before we were leaving for Fire Island, and I just like flipped a cake out into the Tupperware, slapped the lid on, and brought it out, and that was. The the upside down banana bread that oh, we like so good. picked at for the Amazing. weekend. Wow! And then it became tradition that every week I'll bring a Tupperware full of cake in the Katie Kirk Tupperware. In the Katie Kirk Tupperware, <laughs> it was <laughs> in the Katie, Katie Kirk. <laughs> but is it? Can we tell the backstory of, of where that Tupperware I came from, mm -hmm. or no? We can. I, I have. It was. It, it was. It's just. It was from her her late husband's funeral, and she and someone brought it to her and she gave me this whole story when she she gave it to me so i was like oh I'm, i i have to give it back to her <laughs> so like you have to understand we're in the house and the cake is there and everybody just it's not no one cuts it up no. and takes it we just take our forks and dig in like like behemoths like animals yeah but for me every time i took it out i would always say levracha, of blessed memory because <laughs> i knew it was katie Couric's ex uh well it's like your joke about the shiva that everyone's bringing their food to the house yeah but this is like uh, so this, this is a was special it was a special. The, it was a special cake, yeah, definitely. and then and then one of the highlights mm. that we had, a highlights and a lowlights for the Jewish community. Mm. Yes, yes. So in Fire Island, you 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 have your home yeah. with you, whoever your friends are, and there's people who have their own home, and then people who have you. you uh, it's a rental, like an Airbnb, mm -hmm. but like. It's special because you have to really organize and be in harmony with everybody in the house. And Jake, if people don't know, is famous for his challah. Yes, there's cookbooks. He's famous and for yes, a lot of things. There's this cookbook and coming out and he's the best thing. He's famous for many things. <laughs> but the challah is unbelievable. If you are blessed enough to have a Jake Cohen challah, you've made it. It's very special. You've made it, it's no? A privilege. When you get a video of you receiving a Jake Cohen challah. So now, we knew that there were a lot of Jewish people on the island. Yeah. Jewish guys, they were all over the island. That, and, and we figured, you know what? Every night we eat this challah. Jake said, let's do an invitation. We'll have, I'll make, instead of two challahs, four, five, six, whatever you made, they'll all come over. We'll make kiddush. We'll make, uh, we eat the challah. Everybody have a little bit. And then they'll all go back to their homes for exactly. their respective dinners. They weren't all Wait, eating pause. at our house. This was Jake's workaround to everyone trying to invite themselves to it's, our Shabbat dinner. That is true. Dinner. That is, it kept <laughs> being like, you know, what are you guys doing for Shabbat? What are you doing for Shabbat? Everyone wanted an invite to Shabbat. And we love, we love taking in stragglers you love, for Shabbat. But 50 people. But not... it's like, we are a house of seven or eight. And we like to get to 12 max. 10 really is like the sweet spot for Shabbat. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And so that we can have like a conversation. It could be meaningful. It's um, not a catering hall. It's not a catering hall. Yeah. No, this it's not getting a, to this a soup degree. kitchen either. We ended yeah. up with like, like 40, 50 guys in uh, the house. Yeah. 40, 50 guys came to the house to hear Kiddush. Yeah. yeah. To hear Kiddush. They wouldn't have heard Kiddush. They wouldn't have had a... A challah, never mind a J. Cohen challah. Yeah. And they came in and were on the beach. Yeah, that's key. And everybody's in bathing suits. And everybody's Some people in were in speedos. crop tops. And I everybody's in, yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody's in tank tops. And yarmulkes. And, and I brought, for some reason that week, I grabbed a bunch of yarmulkes yeah. and brought, I threw them into my bag and we had it. And, and you made, and for some reason you wore, a, and you had a green crop top. Yes. From what company sent it to you? It's this Instagram account that a lot of people are probably familiar with. It's yeah. called Old Jewish Men. And it's a female crop top that says Pickle Princess. Okay. And it was just, I mean, what Jew doesn't love funny. pickles? And it's just funny. It's very camp. It's the perfect kind of like intersection of Jewish gay uh, <laughs> yeah. culture. So I was like, why not? And I ha and you wore green green shorts. Yeah. And this was green. I looked and like a I giant pickle. I happened to have a green satin yarmulke. Because yeah. my rabbi, Gav, mm -hmm. which is a friend of the podcast. Yeah. Yeah, Always makes yarmulkes for the shul. And this was one of the Purim yarmulkes we had. Uh, it said Adeloyada on it. And anyway, so Jake's outfit was green, green, green. It was amazing. He made the, you made the blessing on the candles. Yes. You made, uh, uh, I made the kiddush and you did the challah. And now there's 60 people, uh, 50 guys standing around. Again, all in bathing suits, tank tops, casual. The whole island is casual. This went on. Line. Yeah. Well, someone, someone taped you. Someone guys taped doing this. The blessing. Someone taped this. 
With the intention of how beautiful is that? With yeah. the intention of like, yes. what Mashiach energy exactly. is happening here. You're on a here. sandbar. <laughs> what a sandbar. Yeah. Eating Jake Cohen challah, yeah. hearing Kiddush, yeah. making hamotzi. This is amazing. Yeah. So it went out. Many people were like, this is wonderful. I wish I could be there. I wish yeah. my son was there. I wish this was there. And then there were the nasty people, the really horrible, horrible people who were judgy. Why would you make Kiddush wearing that? Why would you do? And I, it brought me right to, to this, this thought of my, one of my gurus, Dr. Wayne Dyer. He always said, when you judge somebody, you're not defining them. You're defining yourself as someone who needs to judge. Yeah. So when they're saying, you know, it's their problem. It's their, they're judging themselves. Why would you wear shorts when you're making kids? That was it. Let's be real. Their issue was not with the shorts. Their issue was with, it was a group of gays. It was making, a group of gays, but they're, you know, it's, it's, it's their problem. Yeah, and you know, course. usually the, the more you have a problem with something is because that problem is within you. Yes. I Someone 100%. who doesn't have a problem with gay or homosexuality has just, okay, there's gay guys making kids, gesundheit, hate, enjoy yourself. Exactly. If you are digging and writing and pulling up, slugging up Gomorrahs and, 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 and Torah, you have a problem with it. Yeah. I'll give you an example. I, I, I have a friend, Brian Gross. He's a guy I run jokes by, a friend of mine. He's my litmus test in the Orthodox Jewish community because he's in there, but he's normal. <laughs> but he's normal. So I, I, we're on the phone. I'm running some material by him. And he says to me, I saw the video. I go, okay, no. So he says, I have no problem with it, which means... Others have a problem yes, with it, yes, right? Yes, yes. And then he says to me, in his little tone, he says to me, let me ask you a question. By gay people, is it always Purim? <laughs> yes, the answer is yes. Yes, The answer is yes, and you should live we, your life the same and way. And you should live your life always Purim, enjoy yourself, <laughs> wear something funny. fun. <laughs> it's not yeah. This conversation comes up a lot. I, we love like a, a a Shabbos debate. I think in true Jewish fashion, we love an opportunity to gather community and debate Torah, culture, community. I think we're seeing this on and on going with like, there are a million and one reasons why we need to be doing this right now. But once something that's been coming up a lot in the instance of that and what we did is this concept of modernizing tradition mm -hmm. in order to have it still be a part of Jewish life. We're, we look at this group of 50 guys, and if it wasn't for us creating this space of Shabbat through our lens, right. then they just wouldn't be doing it. And they would just be leaving Jewish tradition behind. Right. And it's the conversation of, is it better to adhere to what is defined as traditional or orthodox, right. or is it better to create something that is sustainable so it becomes part of their daily life of living Jewish value? And that that's like everything I'm about is like, how do we continue Jewish value through the lens of like right. how it works for you? And that's very Amen. well said and very beautiful. I guess my problem was just like, and then I'm going to drop this because I want to talk about the book, was that just everyone's main point boiled down to being, you can't be Jewish and gay at the same time. And that's where you hit a wall with right. me. Right, so, and again, it's, um, it's you can't be, it's you. They can't. They're well, in their own whatever. world struggling okay. and they're nasty. It's always and people with like no profile picture and like one <laughs> yeah. post. And I'm like, but, but, yeah. and but, then they put, they said uh, that man shall not lie with man, he should be put to death. And I literally responded to one. I was like, I'll send you my address. Come try to like put I me to love, death. I love, like, there's nothing I want more than like- You I, love I don't, confrontation. Uh, I don't, view, it's gonna be Leo and I in a in a ring. And we would like, take them because we work out. Oh, oh yeah. I have no patience for them. I I, I don't, it's the, the, the let, me, let me explain to you something. They're already punished. Of yeah. course. Because they're themselves. Yeah. They live with themselves. And they have no what gays a in their life. horrible existence <laughs> oh my God. to be that you have a problem with 50 gay men making kiddush and having hamotzi. You have a problem with that, then you really have your own problem. You really, yeah. you're a sad person. Like jealousy. What, what's the, what's the, what's the punishment of jealousy? Jealousy. Yeah. What's the punishment of, of, of being judgy and being judgmental is, is that you are that person. You, you poor thing. I feel so bad for them. That's why I don't come yeah. for them. When that one guy came for us, the Yoizel and Muncy, I, <laughs> that I, no, no, but he did it yeah, with, yeah. The, with Torah behind him. I'll give you, to, I'll give you Torah behind yeah, it. Yeah, I'll yeah. give you, don't, don't, don't come to me Torah. with that. But this is people never would have heard Kiddush that day. Maybe, maybe they, maybe some of them left and said, "I think we should do this every Friday." I yeah. think whatever, and it's their Shabbos. 
It's not your Shabbos, it's their Shabbos. Completely. And that's what it is. Period. And there is nothing better for a Shabbos than a, a recipe yes. from Jake Cohen. <laughs> I Bob. could not. Period. Emmis, 100%. I was. I will not. Well, I could not. I could not. It's been the funniest thing throughout this summer. <laughs> <laughs> Modi getting the name. You know I'm dyslexic. You know I'm, I can't. You should be glad I, I got some of the words I in love there. It. I love it. I love it. So how has it been? So uh, the book comes out September 12th. Yes. And you're doing a big event at the Stryker Center. Yes. Is that how you say it? Stryker, Stryker Center. Stryker Center. Temple Center. Manual. Um, with Isaac Mizrahi, right? Yes. What, and so what do you? What, how does the book tour work? Like where are you going? What do you I will do? just set one thing up. J Jake went into the summer like this. I am letting my hair down and by hair down, hair off. Yes, I am yeah. letting my hair down because you you are ready to go. You This was your summer to relax before you go on the road. I mean, you know the drill. It's funny because I feel like Modi doing this. All right, and then it's tour, September 12th, the Stryker Center yeah, in New you York. Yeah, you gotta push it. Um, I did a tour for my last book that was like hybrid. So it was like, because it was still like COVID-ish. Mm -hmm. um, so it was like half in person, half virtual. This is my first time doing like, Full on the road, yeah. nonstop, and like bigger venues, which yeah. is a blessing. So I'm launching in a lot of Jewish places because that's where that's home. That's where it's a great place yeah. to kind of start with community. Um, so launching at the Striker Center on September 12th with Isaac Mizrahi. Then we go to Joyzy, um, doing Words Bookstore in Maplewood with Taffy Ackner, the incredible uh, Jewess who wrote Fleischman's in Trouble. Um, right. And then we take a quick break for um, Rosh Hashanah. Mm -hmm. And then I'm back to do... Uh, Toronto, and then it's Yom Kippur. Mm -hmm. And then I go to Philly, where I'm doing the Weizmann uh, Center with Mike Solomonov. And then wow. we head to- Guest of the show. Exactly. We head to LA, um, where I'm doing the Skirball Center with Alex Edelman. Yes. Um, guest of the show. And then uh, I do San Francisco. When you say with Alex Edelman, what does that mean? In conversation. Like, for example, like, you probably, if you weren't on your crazy Euro uh, Israel <laughs> tour, you would be doing one of these conversations where yeah. it's us on stage talking about the book. Maybe we do a demo and oh. then I go into the book signing. Yeah. Um, By the way, I am very good in a demo and I now have I, a, a chef coat saw, that says I Modi. Saw. I'm demoed. Listen, you you know the first thing I did was checked your tour schedule and saw that you were out of town on the right. 12th. Um Yeah, otherwise you know we would have been there. You would be there. Yeah. So it's 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 really fun because this is like the moment where you get to see it IRL. And unlike I think the, in real life, those of you who don't in know, real life, the big I difference which know. is so fascinating is so much of what I do um on this tour is like splitting up my time into to like these little vignettes with every person since like you're going, you're signing, you're talking and people have like a quick moment mm -hmm. to share with you. So they're giving like the biggest punch. It's like their favorite recipe of yours, some some family history, how they're connected to you. Oh, my aunt's mother so knows yes. your grandma. Yeah, 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 it's like yeah, yeah, all this yeah. stuff. Yeah. And it's both like incredibly beautiful stuff, some like more touching stuff because food is so integrated in people's lives, both the both positive and, and a lot of like incredible memories around people who have passed and, and to be a part of that journey is special. And that's what I want with this book. I think with the first book, it was so rooted around the holidays. Uh, so rooted around like big celebration, Shabbat. Okay. And this book is about like everyday Jewish hospitality. Right. I always say this is like my grandma hospitality book of like embracing that vibe that we kind of really grew up with where it's like someone's coming over. How am I going to feed them? Quickly? Just a little, not just, a whole meal, not a whole production, just like a, a nosh. A nosh. So that, but the people think that's like, oh, a snack. Well, when you think, when I think of like my grandmother, my my mother-in-law, a lot of these are big, like big scale items that then you keep in the fridge and the freezer. So you have yeah. leftovers for days. Yeah. Oh, you're hungry. Let me right. heat you up a plate of this. Let me heat you up a bowl yeah. of that. Always have something sweet out on the counter. I was coming here. The funny thing is, it's like, obviously I forgot to bring the physical book. Why? Because I was so <laughs> set on bringing some cake for Leo because he this is your favorite. Cake, everyone, if you could, um, oh, you can't even imagine how good that is. We we are getting their multicam views, right? Just because. Hey, I, give I me. I have a wide. good. I have a good one but, on me. Yeah, I have a, here, I have a shop this one is, on me. Um, this a is not the Katie Kirk Tupperware. Not a, for no, the I gave back the Katie Kirk this, Tupperware. Yeah, uh, let me open. Up. Put the he camera on me. Cake. Let's see how. Oh. Oh, you can't really it's just, lift it up. Yeah. Ah, so this is. Are you on my camera? 
Oh God, all smushed because this is it's so good. Simmus cake. But we just t- in the house, we just ticking, yeah. ticking, ticking, ticking. So what's the Simmus cake? What's so like it's like it's, a play on carrot yeah. cake, but instead yeah. it's carrots and sweet potatoes and prunes and cinnamon and orange zest. So it's all of the kind of the flavors of Simmus into a carrot cake with cream cheese frosting. So and good. the best part is, it's like. This is very decadent and dairy. The cake itself is parved. So I remember when we we when you came over for Hanukkah, I did a version that a friend taught me. Where it's like whenever you have a parved cake and you need a frosting, you just take cookie butter, like Biscoff cookie butter, and whip it up with powdered sugar, and it's like the perfect par frosting. Voila, voila. No, but that I, I, I think- you know, until this podcast, I never look really understood but between having you, Mike Salamanov, and um, who else? It, that that that. It's your Mashiach energy. Food is your Mashiach yeah. energy. It's insane. I didn't. I never realized that. And we had Jackie on. She was like, yeah, it was when I was grooming with my mother. I grew. Such it's a talent. A, it's such a Mashiach energy in food. Me, it's comedy. Yeah, Make yeah, people laugh, make people happy. That's my Mashiach energy. Just reveal Mashiach through that, you know? And and you, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the food. It's the food, but I, I do think that, I think you've gotten to know that, like, my first job, first and foremost, is a shadchan. Like oh, like making yes. shidduch is my oh, is, really it nice. is literally Jake loves to make shidduch. Like, who, who did you make a shidduch with in the with Sarah Pasik? Yeah, Sarah oh, Pas- oh, that's my one God. of many. Yeah, what a many. Oh, been, like I shidduch, do By the way, people, you should know shidduch does not mean who you're getting married with, and that's it. Shidduch is also friends. Kim Kushner, we cannot thank you enough for making this shidduch with the Fire Island house. Completely. We knew each other. Completely. Yeah. But we, that the Shabbat dinner of yours when you had the the, the, the house and all that, that was, it's she a shidduch. She made multiple shidduch. Uh, now, Dr. Amy Wexler is now my no. dermatologist. Oh, like, it's amazing. literally. Um, Michael Rappaport. Yeah? yeah Michael so Rappaport. Also... We met him at Kim Kushner's house. Yeah. Wow. She made that shidduch. It's a shidduch, yeah. It's you. It's me- a ta- it is a talent. It's and when a you talent. Do, when you do that over a meal with food, you connect people. It's something that uh, it's very interesting because it's a discipline I've had to take in. Where I have thrown these big shabbats, I've made these crazy connections of people, and there's a lot of instances where. I connect people who then become closer with each other than they are with yeah. me. Yeah. And oh. there is something that's also kind of but beautiful you have to be about that. Beautiful and you have to really it's know that. It makes like, you happy. Exactly. Because in the head, go exactly. be friends. Send them exactly. off on their way. Exactly. You yes. were there overlap. And now I've made, now you're going to Israel on your tour. I was like, great. Yes. You're the people that need you need to meet in Tel Aviv. Yes. Because um, that's the goal. That's yeah. always the goal. Yes. Yeah, so cu- you have to curate a vibe too. Yeah. When, you get, when you create the vibe in, at, a, at a Shabbat dinner, things like that happen. You yeah. get that, uh, sh- yeah. So, not to switch gears too hard, but the video of your mom seeing the book for the first time. Oh, the sister mm. too. Oh, so sweet. Oh my god! It's like your mom is so adorable. It was so sweet seeing her reaction. How she was, so must be so proud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's actually the thing that people say the most to me when I'm on tour, when I'm that anywhere. They love your mom. They're like, oh, <laughs> you no, know, your mother must be so proud. Oh my god! That's the, the number one thing that I get, which I love. And this like this book I dedicated to my sister, who's. Truly, oh, my best friend, but also yeah. the, the pickiest eater in the world. So it's a good. Well, the there's a story so behind good. your dedicate. You also wrote. You, you gave her a shtech. Oh yeah, in the dedic- it wasn't just a "I love you" thing. It was yeah, like, no, no, mm, no. you gave her a shtech. She, there was this one recipe in this book which I love. It. They're um, Havdalah snickerdoodles. So they're snickerdoodle oh. cookies that uses, which are delicious. By the way, especially of, coming home from dancing all night. That is true. They that are. True. <laughs> if you are dancing all night and come home at four a.m. <laughs> and you are Blood hungry. The, you should put that. It's That's true. what a it's snickerdoodle true. with the jelly with, on top. Oh my god! Or the tempty cream <laughs> cheese that you tempty cream cheese. By the way, That's we had the sponsor cream, of our fire 1980. House. It, it literally is <laughs> the 1980 tempty cream cheese. Wait, on so the what mat. was that recipe with your sister? The so the Havdala snickerdoodle. So they're snickerdoodles that use all of the spices from the Havdala spice box. So it's like instead of doing that, it's like oh, for Havdala, bake up thing of cookies, make your whole kitchen smell like mm-hmm. th- to awaken the senses. Um, and she hates that it has rose water and cardamom, which rose petals and, and cardamom are both part of the Abdal spice box. She hates them. So she takes a bite and this is at a big table full of people. She goes, oh, this is literally the worst thing I've ever tasted. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. So of everyone, she has no shame. The funniest part is there was one Shabbat where um, someone brought a dessert and she thought I made it. And she, she, she oh, goes, no. she goes, oh, this isn't very good. Oh no. <laughs> and no. I was like, I was like, that, that wasn't mine. And she immediately bit her tongue. She is no shade what it's me <laughs> with someone else. She could be very polite. Zero so editing goes, skills. Exactly. Which can be funny. Is she funny? 
She's very funny. And she's, yeah. when I tell you the person, she she is the harshest with Alex Edelman. Like, she just is relentless with, like, she loves someone who's also funny can that she can with, volley with. Yeah. Yes. What do you mean she's relentless with him? She, oh, she, she just, just, like, she'll, like, she'll just throw things or she'll pick at things or oh, okay, she sees okay. something. Chepo, chepo, the yeah. chepo. In Yiddish, it's chepo. She chepers him. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, people who have no editing skills are very funny. Case in point, my father. Oh, wow. <laughs> my father has, yeah. what, what's on his mind is out of his mouth yeah, yeah, in, yeah. In, in one swoop. So it's very funny sometimes because it's not, like, held back anything. Yeah. And my mother's no different. I mean, you got to you you we you, you got to meet her. We experienced your yeah. mother. Yes, she's very sweet. She's very very sweet. Oh my God! So that it's okay. So the tour's coming up and all that. And uh, wait, Joey, it, I just noticed that you brought forks. Oh, of course. So you he's can like actually, fully prepared, I, guys. Listen, like he comes in with is, a Tupperware full of cake and a uh, and forks. Even should we, should we have a little? Have he, a little. Like yeah. this I is believe, hospitality. I believe in curating, like. Uh, Curating what you want out of life. So if you want to do something, and it's so funny because it's the opposite of, um, there have been a couple of instances where I've been around people who are in like the music or acting industry, and then like kind of force a performance in a situation yeah. that like is very awkward and weird, which yes. doesn't work. And yet there's never a wrong time to bring out a little cake. <laughs> like it's just like the best, it's the best yeah. thing. Yeah. On that note, Baruch Adonai Melchan Borei, my name is a note. I mean, mm. wow. Oh my god. It's a good one. It's a good one. It's, I will mm. say this mm. this book is so many recipes that are both mm. like new inventions as well as so yeah, many What are old some of your favorite recipes. what are some of the things that you're most excited for people to like see and try in the so new book? There's a full besides this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that is really so, the next level. I mean, since it's coming out right before Roche, there's a brand new brisket um, oh that I love. Are you in that school like my mother that, that the year can't change unless a brisket is made? I, that is insane. When I tell you, oh there God. is no world without a brisket. Any special occasion, any holiday, there needs to be a brisket. Doesn't matter if you're making chicken, doesn't matter if you're making salmon, it <laughs> also needs to be a, a supplementary brisket. brisket. Exactly. Like, well, you know what? You know, probably really is a meat eater. My mother. If there's no brisket, like the year won't change. Like the calendar will, will <laughs> yes, get stuck. That's, tradi that's tradition. That's tradition. And it's like, and the, uh, do goya meat br brisket? Yes. yes goya yeah, meat but they brisket. don't, not as not much the way as, we not that we eat do it. it. They do like smoked barbecue Yeah, brisket. we eat it. And then like for three days. <laughs> yeah, it's a little fresh. I love, I love. So and you have then the brisket recipe. I do have a chicken. I call it, Alex named it, my husband named it soupless chicken soup because okay. it's a roast chicken with all of the vegetables and flavors of like okay. Jewish penicillin. So mm. it has all of that kind of vibe without the soup. Um, for the desserts, I have this Simmons cake. I have these, this apple cake for my great grandmother that's like half cake half pie maybe i'll bring that for labor day um uh, i need to figure out what's the what's the final tupperware situation yeah <laughs> um, the final round the final it has round. to be huge it has we to be a, huge. yeah it has to be huge it's very nice you know we've been vacationing with you and alex and you you take so he is obviously so sweet and you take such good care of him and you're always making him little plates. <laughs> and like, it's so obvious no, that you're that is your mother. Love, love language to him. And he loves it. And it's interesting, like, does he give you, he's, I've heard him give you like some feedback and ideas and stuff. So he named this recipe. He's my muse. Yeah. He is the only opinion that matters. Oh, really? Truly. And he will come to me and he'll be like, like, what about, the, he'll like name an ingredient. Like, I'll be like, what about like something like that with this? Yeah. And and then I'll think about it. And I was like, huh, actually, that would work really well. A perfect example, there's this, this recipe in my book. One of my things is like, l what do you do with a loaf of challah? We always mm. end up with bread. And that's the, kind of the perfect thing. It's like everyone always has challah on hand in the freezer, in, in your pantry. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things I do is like these, these challah schnitzel sandwiches. Wow. So you make schnitzel, you make it fresh, it's delicious. Schnitzel is also great the next day on a sandwich. Um, yeah. And I was trying to figure out like what direction to take it as a sandwich. And he was just saying, he's like, do you know what I remember? Because he grew up in Switzerland and one of his favorite things is, is this thing called, called remoulade, which is just like the celery root coleslaw. Oh, wow. And he's like, I want that. And, and so he's like, you should do something well. with that. And it was kind of like exactly what I needed. And then I made it into this like schnitzel, like this French schnitzel sandwich. So I added like herbs de Provence to the schnitzel. And then I add the celery root on top and cornichon. And, oh, and I'm hungry. And it was, Yum. and it was just, and on challah. And that's the perfect thing is like you use soft challah with the crunchy schnitzel. And it's like that. I love textures and kind of like a lot of that stuff. And that it was so born good. from from him from just one little off comment that you never know what's going to spark. Which is why I 
I actually don't surround myself with many food people. I love creatives from like other fields, which is why it's, I'm, you always see me with comedians, with actors, with Broadway people. I'm not a Broadway gay. I can't tell you any of these songs, but I <laughs> that love- That was one of the craziest nights of our, uh, that, that Broadway show night. Yes, we, we oh my God. We did a one cake. song. We went to show tunes. Um, Are you not eating cake, But, but yet we had, yeah. because we had a, a Tony nominated actors just crashing on our couch. And it's like, you, right, you have casual. these moments where- you get to be surrounded by other creatives who are so right. passionate about what they do. Yes. And you never know what's going to be that one And you have no thing. connection to it. Like, I have no connection. Besides you and the food and eating, I have no connection to to food. Exactly. I've, I've, I don't want to cook anything. <laughs> I don't want to ever clean a dish. I, I mean, it's so yum. But, I, no, but, but it's so funny what you said about creatives like being on and... Your way of being on is actually just you. You handed me this piece. No, but it's also it's also a personality. It's a personality. Also a personality. There's love in that cake. No, I know. It's not just a cake. I can't stop eating. There was this one moment where literally I'm going around. I was like, uh, it was this one. It was around Seder. My friend threw this thing. I'm I'm like, I I made naturally. I made these brownies. These kosher for Passover brownies. I'm like hand feeding Deborah Messing brownie. I'm like, you gotta (laughs) eat one. You gotta eat one. Like in a way that was so pushy. Because it's like, I see all these people and no one's having dessert. You got to have a little something sweet. Oh, yeah. Um, yes. I remember one night you came to our house and no one ate your dessert because <laughs> no one crushed. was hungry. I was crushed. Was they, might as well, they might as well call me fat. Like, I, like, I will <laughs> tell you one thing everybody asks me when they see you on the videos with us. How does he stay so thin? The number shape? one thing. Uh, I know. Say, uh, how does he stay so thin? I, so thin. I, so thin. I, so thin. You must not eat. The he doesn't eat. Does he eat? Does he eat? Does he eat? Does no? It little, is what it is. I will say it is a discipline that requires so much work, so much work to do it all because I'm also have no self control. So I'm no, I, the guys, amount of like I'm not eating this right now. I last night <laughs> I made it, cut myself a slice. That night I had someone over, I cut them a slice, cut myself another slice. Alex came home. You want a little? Okay, I'll have another bite. It's it just like I, I will I say I was stream. skeptical too. I was like, how does he look the way he looks and make all this beautiful food? But then again, we lived in the house with you for a few weeks and you work out like a crazy person. Yeah, you city bike all over. I city bike here. You're you you're burning off the cake, so you yeah, enjoy he's burning it, it off. You, you need it. You, uh, you need it. Bless your heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good for you. No, no. We but everybody's obsessed with that. What he does? He doesn't need his stuff. He doesn't, doesn't need his stuff. No, he eats his stuff. We've seen so, him eat. Also, I mean, we don't. You can you can tell us to cut this if you don't want to talk about this. But it's been interesting because uh, when we were out in Fire Island, you were also giving us previews for things for your third book yes yeah so like this new book isn't even out yet you're already brainstorming and brewing for the third Wait, hold book. on Sp- sp- <laughs> speaking of the shit with sarah yeah to get your new book there's obviously pre-order and all my friends have dina yeah. already Sarah's has a pre-order agent. this one everybody sarah the lit agent I you're a lit it. agent we pre-ordered um uh dina pre-ordered all of our friends pre-ordered love, already love. but she always has ways of like different yes so I'll she has some recipes that. that didn't land in the book it's a combo what i wanted to do was um it was actually it was it was a really funny conversation because my editor emails me we want the book to come out september 5th i call her up that's impossible I'm coming back from Fire Island that day. I'm not going. I was like, I was like, I'm on vacation. I'm not going straight into a press tour. I'm going to be sunburned. I'm going to be like exhausted. Good for you. I can't do it. We're pushing into week to September 12th. The only thing is, it comes out on Tuesday. That Friday is Erev Rosh Hashanah. Right. Um, and I was like, well, here's what we're going to do. Pre-orders are super important. If any, if you like, if you want to support someone, like pre-ordering is a great way to give like the. Um, the publisher a good idea of like how's the book going to do how much re- how many resources they're going to get towards marketing and a big thing is it's like i always want fame for myself is separate i that's why it's like you see my face but really it's like you don't know a lot about me you know more about like what i'm cooking because mm. i want all of the fame all of the energy towards the recipes towards the book i think it's changed a little bit throughout I mean, the summer they I got mean, to know you a little bit closer <laughs> from your instagram <laughs> posts which, i mean sex good cells for you. sex cells sex um, cells but one of the things that was super important was like everyone's going to be planning their Rosh Hashanah meals. So I was like, great. The second you pre-order my book, you get eight recipes that are Rosh Hashanah ready um, to start cooking. So 
A, you could like start cooking from yeah. the book as soon as you pre-order. Genius. And B, you could start planning your menu, these desserts. I've gotten so many messages from people who have made the Simmis cake. And they're like, this is the best cake I've ever made. No, it's really, really the best. It's like crazy. I'm eating it's it right now. Simmis it's a Simmis cake. I, I don't know how to describe what Simmis cake. Do people know what Simmis is? Yeah, it's a stew. It's like, it's like, cool. we love, we love sweet things as a savory side dish. Yeah. Um, and this is like a sweet carrot and sweet potato, and squash, like stew with prunes and cinnamon it's and so orange. It's so Ashkenazi though. Ashkenazi's Ashkenazi. love to eat and go, it's like dessert. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, your first book, Jewish, yeah. right? It, that was more of like a traditional cookbook. I could nosh is smaller scale hospitality, it's would you say? Every, everyday every hospitality. Day hospitality. So it's like, think of, it starts with a challah section. So everything, mm-hmm. once you master yeast to dough, these are all the things you can do with challah. So you can make Moses in a blanket where you're wrapping hot dogs, which is literally the best snack so in good. the world, <laughs> to like challah monkey bread, which is yeah. beyond, beyond, beyond. Um, making burger buns, all these things of what you can do if you don't want to make two challahs, if you want to just make one and use the other half of the dough for something else. Then we go into breakfast stuff where I have, have a whole section of schmears. So you're buying your bagels. Yeah. Here's how you zhuzh up your schmears. Uh-huh. Um, and then it's like soups. Salads, sandwiches, what's your everyday things with how you're eating, the things to keep in the house. You don't have three quarts of soup in your freezer for like, what's going to happen when you get sick? <laughs> what, like, that's a crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, I told you. You always have to have soup in the freezer. <laughs> and then the entrees. Maybe I made you buy me soup and, and keep yeah, it. Yeah, one time I accidentally bought like $200 worth of soup from Yeah, we had it in the From BH Vegetarian. Of course. Ah, of delicious. Course. You never, it's never a wrong time for lentil soup. I didn't know what a pint versus a quart was, I think. No, I love it. And then the entrees. Entrees are split into either like recipes that come together in less than an hour. So like quick, someone's coming over and we cook dinner or like project recipes that yield tons of leftovers. So you Mm -hmm. have something in the fridge or the freezer to like reheat. And then the desserts are snacking cakes and cookies. The whole idea is like you should have something sweet on the counter. How do you define a snacking cake? Uh, Versus a, A cake that can just stay out. Mm-hmm. Really, it's like oh. not a layer cake. Nothing that's too precious. Nothing yeah. that, like there. Like this Dina m- has in the corner in her kitchen. She has a whole dessert. A whole corner. dessert. Like if you should never, and no one eats it. But, I eat it whenever I'm there. Yeah, <laughs> D- Dina has like a, all over the, the a counter. That's exactly what you're talking to about. Snag, a little, cut a little slice. Yeah. You're having a cup of coffee, and, and yeah. I need, all the chapters are named. I love, I love a reference. I love a reference to some kind of Jewish TV show, movie. So all of the chapters are references to like my favorite. Quotes. So, like the the soup section is called "We Both Love Soup," which is obviously from oh, Best from in Show. Best in show. We, say that we say all the, the time. time that we both love soup. We both love um, soup. The, the cake section is called "Who Serves Coffee Without a Piece of Cake?" That's right. from Seinfeld, Seinfeld yeah. when when George's mother says, "We're sitting there like idiots <laughs> drinking coffee without a piece of cake." Right. Um, and so the <laughs> idea is, it's so ingrained in our in our culture of like, how do you feed someone? How do you feed those you love? And I feel like we're really like reclaiming this idea of like, it's so easy to turn your home into your center for hospitality. You don't have to be meeting people outside. So the only way you make deep connections is by welcoming people into your home. 100%. We have a beautiful home. You do. And we invite people over. And if someone ever wants to meet me for lunch or whatever for works, I go, no, no, no. You come to our apartment. Yeah. There's no waiter sitting on top of you. Do you know what you're having? <laughs> do you know what you're having? Let me get that. No, it's quiet. We, 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 and we don't, we, Leo this week actually made an amazing salmon. Oh, but wow. when, we salmon. Order in, when we order in, and, and then we, we, we order in, and then we just throw it all out. So we're not sitting in the kitchen cleaning. So our guests don't feel bad that we cooked for them and made for them yeah, and all of that. Yeah. that. That's your whole journey on, yeah. your, on your own. But we, <laughs> we you know, um, so it, yes, when you, when they come to the house and you're eating in your own home, it's I can't that. not cook. I just don't know how to grocery shop. And I know that sounds counterintuitive. No, no, no. I get, I get so to, much. Because then you have like a fridge full of stuff that's rotting and this whole. Yeah. I, I know. You're, but, you're on the road. Okay. Constantly. So so the, the, the book by now, by the time this airs, the will it be well, available to buy? Up to you. Or oh, no. I mean, we can judge the schedule. So we can judge the we can judge the schmear. Yeah. Let's schmear it. We'll Maybe schmear. probably like right before it comes out. Yeah. Okay. Like week so, before. So. I always say, be the friend that brings the friends to the comedy show. Be the friend that buys the book. Not only for your Jewish friends, this is exactly what you buy 
for your non-Jewish friends. Exactly. Give them that little taste, that little Modi comedy that they yeah. feel like they're a part, they're in our world, they're in the tribe. Here it is. This is the reference. This is delicious. Uh, if, if a non-Jew eats this, this cake, he'll understand why the Jews have survived all these years. <laughs> <laughs> they'll under, I, you understand, you get it. I think that's you, so spot on because I always say the person who's single-handedly done more for American Jewry than any other individual is Fran Drescher. What she did with the nanny <laughs> yeah. of, of making America fall in love with Jews. Listen, I love I love Larry David. I love Jerry Seinfeld. That's but the so whole funny. the whole gist of Seinfeld and Curb is that these are not likable people. These are bad people. Right. Um, <laughs> like, but with the nanny, you just loved them. Right. And you see yourself, your families in these people that just happen to be so proudly Jewish, and that's the power of comedy, that's the power of food, right. in which you're able to create that connection across cultures. So many people that aren't Jewish reach out and they're like, oh my God, I love the dynamic between you and your mother, between your mother and, mm. and her aunt, because like that's just like me and, and my family. Right. And that's what you want. You want to create those bridges. Amazing. And how do they get this book? Wherever books are sold, Amazon. obviously we <laughs> love um, an indie bookstore, but it is all on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Um, there are signed copies on Premiere. Like if you go to my website or my Instagram, I have everything linked very easily. It's Chef J Cohen. It's just J Cohen. Just J Cohen. Just J Cohen. 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 There oh, are, I, I have you. I have you say this, Chef J. I Cohen love on my, on my thing. I love that. Um, so J Jake Cohen. Wow, I can't believe you got that as your Instagram. I paid a child for it. Um, I this paid was a child. this was years ago. It was like a preteen. You have no idea. Oh, was it the domain God. or the, the handle? handle. Oh, I wow. always it was think like a of 13 people, year old. Never someone named is Mike Bernstein. Like there must be 4,000 Mike Bernstein. There are a lot of Jay Cohens. Of course, a lot of <laughs> Jay Cohens. Yeah. Cohen's. So what happened was, and this was years ago, this was probably like six years ago, six, seven years ago. Um, and I, you'll never guess how much I paid him for it. Uh, we don't have to. We can, we'll, we'll bleep it out. Twenty five dollars. No. Oh, wow. Twenty five dollars. I was I ready would, for I, something crazy. I would have paid. I would have paid two grand. <laughs> <laughs> like, like whatever. Listen, it's branding the handles, all that. Listen, stuff is me when I I wanted by Modi dot com. Modi is a huge name in in India. So of course, there's a million. The president. There's Modi dot com was taken by some like like a travel company okay. or or whatever a uh, or a, a, a carpet salespeople. A, a lot of like. Um, Indian yeah. companies were taken, and the president's name is Modi. But I got Modi Live, and it became like Modi it Live, became, which is, by the way, it's not. It's really great because Mordechai, Modi, Mordechai Live, live it's great. It's, it's true, a good, it's a good true. little. It works. But uh, and people anyway, love, so people love calling. I know people would be like, "Oh, you know Modi Live, right? Like, like, right? Yeah, right? They do." It kind of so get boring. your book. Get a book for yourself. Get a book for a friend. Bring be, it to the high holidays. Bring it to the. Oh my God! What an amazing gift! Send yeah. it them ahead of time. Wherever yeah. you're gonna eat, <laughs> wherever you're gonna eat, send the book ahead of time. Select what a gift wrapping. Better option. than flowers or whatever you're gonna bring them over there. Um, <laughs> get, bring the book. It's 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 Mashiach energy. It really really is. There's love behind it. He really is so passionate about it. I we've lived with you for a summer. Yeah, you're a superstar. You're a superstar. You're really in the shama. A real real soul. Um, and thank you for coming back. And thanks anytime. for coming back. And you're always invited here. You know anytime. that. Anytime. Standing guests. I, I'll bike here anytime you want. You're like, <laughs> hey, what are you doing? What are you doing on Wednesday? <laughs> you don't have to bring cake every time. I probably will. <laughs> I probably, <laughs> I probably will. will. Okay. Me, mm -hmm. I am, we've announced a whole bunch of tour dates. Milwaukee, Charlotte, North Carolina, and um, Atlanta. And Atlanta. Atlanta. Uh, the tickets are available on modilive.com. We also have shows that are... Um, we are, at we're this time. adding shows in Israel for Sukkot. We're adding a second Tel Aviv show. There's a lot of things going on. So, so I would go to modilive.com. Modilive.com. Uh, be the friend who brings the friends to the comedy show. That's Mashiach Energy. Again, thank you very much to a and Provisions and uh, uh, Weitz and Luxembourg, our friends uh, that helped make this podcast happen. And thank you again, yeah, Jake Yeah, thank Cohen. you, Jake. Bye. Anytime. Happy and a healthy new year. Ciao. Ciao. Oh, perfect. Perfect amount of time. Yeah.